then following Jesus is going to be a big struggle for us. Now, let's be honest. Let's be very honest. In America, money touches everything we do. It's that important. But even more important is this. Jesus, our Savior, wants to be in charge of everything in our lives. He doesn't want our lives compartmentalized that there are parts of living where we keep him out. Let me ask you a question. How are you doing with the great American dream? We know what that is. You know, a nice home, white picket fence perhaps, a good job, late model car, nice retirement nest egg. How's that working out for you and your family? Over seven years ago, our country entered what is now called the Great Recession, a devastating time for so many, for even many people that we knew. Home values tanked, 401ks dropped, jobs dried up, companies laid off workers, or they shut down. And while the situation has improved somewhat, it has changed things forever. The great American dream became a nightmare for, for so many people. And I'm convinced that the heart of the financial crisis that occurred was people wanting more than they need. And at the heart of that was greed. And at the heart of that is our sinful human condition. There are two disorders, two illnesses that impact all people, both socially and physically. The first I like to call affluenza. This is the constant need for more stuff, bigger stuff, better stuff, the pursuit, the pursuit of trying to keep up with the Joneses, the virus of I want it now, whether I can afford it or not. There's two statistics that I find absolutely fascinating. The average size of the American home in the last 30 years has gone from about 1,600 square feet to almost 2,400 square feet. And yet, at the very same time, in 1970, there were basically no storage units in America, and yet today, there is over 2 billion square feet of self-storage space for all the stuff that we don't have room to put in our houses or garages, and far too often is bought with money that we don't have. And that brings us to another illness that often goes hand in hand with affluenza. And that is called credititis. The great opportunity to buy it now, pay for it later, with interest, of course. Our economy is built on credit and credit cards. And that, too, was a major cause of the Great Recession as people bought more than they could pay for later, including home mortgages, home equity loans, car loans, student loans, credit card debt, and all the stress that goes with all that debt. Now, some of you might be thinking silently to yourselves, Pastor, where is the good news in all of this? Well, I'm working my way there. And I'm starting in Genesis chapter 2, the Garden of Eden. God put Adam and Eve there, and it was what? It was perfect. They had everything they needed. They had a perfect relationship with God, a perfect relationship with each other, a perfect relationship with the created world. They had all they could eat, plenty of shelter, all except one tree. That one tree was to be off limits. It showed that God was still God. And, of course, as Paul Harvey used to say, you know the rest of the story. Eat it, said the devil. You won't die. You're worth it. You deserve it. You'll be like God. Do it now. And sin entered the world, particularly the sin of pride. I've got to have it and have it now because I'm worth it. You know, advertisers use the same appeal, but the devil was the first one to use that. And humans got entangled with the sin of pride and the sin of greed. What was the result for Adam and Eve? Instead of innocence, they had shame. Instead of walking with God, they hid from him. Instead of living forever perfectly with everything in the garden, they were banished and they face death, both spiritual and physical. 
and they passed all of this on to their descendants. That is why Jesus, our Savior, would go to the cross for you and for me to pay for all of our sins, including our sins of pride and our sins of greed. He would rise victorious on the third day, defeating sin, death, devil, and hell. God gave Adam and Eve everything they needed, and he set up a boundary around one tree, but they wanted more. God has given us plenty today. Think about it. How many of you had a home to sleep in last night, a mattress to sleep on, a car to drive here with gasoline in it, a breakfast this morning, or you're going to rob all the donuts and stuff down there, in the fellowship hour, which I hope you do, because if they're left over, I tend to eat them myself, and that's not a good thing. Clothes to wear, and usually very nice clothes. But God has also set up boundaries for dealing with our sins of pride and greed. The Bible is filled with wisdom about dealing with money and possession. That's why Jesus talked about it so much. Turn to Jesus, and he will give, re- give you everything you want, Right? Wrong. Jesus never said that. Rather, our Savior said, Do not worry, saying, What shall I eat, or what shall I drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Jesus is saying, Follow me first, and you will have everything you need. Which leads us to some basic questions. Who is first in your heart? What is first in your life? Is it life in this world or life in God's kingdom? How many here recall the Beatitudes from the Sermon on the Mount? How do you you, you recall how they all began? Remember, they began by saying, blessed are those who mourn, or those who are meek, or blessed are those who are merciful. But if you look at those Beatitudes from Matthew chapter 5 carefully, each of them begin by seeking God, by following Jesus. Brothers and sisters, when we get that part right, all the rest, what we need, will Next Sunday on Financial Stewardship Commitment Sunday, we're going to talk about cultivating contentment, giving generously, and I pray that God will bless our time together. Amen. I invite the congregation to stand as together we speak our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, projecting